Antonio, Texas. This is John Hagee Today. Join us for an inspiring and uncompromising message that can change your life forever. Read with me, please, Matthew, the 19th chapter and the 26th verse. This is a great verse of scripture for any person battling a deadly disease. Read it with me. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Again, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. To me, the joy of being a Christian is the knowledge that you can live life without limit. There is nothing that impairs you in any dimension of your life. You are not bound literally by physical law, scientific law, medical law. When the doctor walks into your room and says it's over, I want you to understand it's not over until God Almighty says it's over. When you come to a Red Sea, Science says you have to stop, especially when there are two million people behind you. But when God is with you, you put your foot in the waters, they part, and you walk across dry shot. When you get in a lion's den, and those lions have been starved for three days to make them especially fierce, science says they're going to eat you. But God says you're going to use them for a couch because there is no limitation with God. When Jesus walked on the water, he was demonstrating in the flesh that there are times that the natural principles are overcome by supernatural principles, that the just shall live by faith, and without faith it is impossible to please God, and therefore to those who believe truly, nothing is impossible to those that believe. If that was the only message Christendom have, it would have, it would make this the most exciting message on planet Earth. Cancer is America's number one killer. My father died with cancer 10 years ago. My mother conquered cancer at the age of 69, and for those of you who are watching this on national television, will tell you that uh, she was uh, diagnosed as having colon cancer, and the doctor said uh, to us when we went to visit with him in this, uh, what I call draconian session of where he expectrated what amounted to a death sentence, he said, uh, your mother has, at the best, 12 months to live. She has a colon cancer the size of a, of a grapefruit, and uh, we're going to go in and cut that out, and she's going to have a colostomy, and she'll be in the hospital three weeks, and she'll go home and uh, live maybe six to 12 months with what he had marginal health. And so we prayed and began to believe God for my mother's healing. And when she went to the cancer ward, to, when she went to have her surgery, that cancer had shrunk to the size of a plum. They clipped it out. There were no roots. There was no colostomy. She wasn't in there three weeks. She was in there three days. She went back to work. She was forced to retire at the age of 70. She's 85 years old today and in perfect health because God's power is greater than cancer. And I know some of you in this audience and thousands of you watching by television have been diagnosed as having cancer. And so I want to establish tonight a biblical pattern for fighting cancer. First of all, what is it? The American Cancer Society says it is a disease in which there is un uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells, which if unchecked will cause death. So cancer is the growth of abnormal cells, cells gone berserk. And your first reaction when you hear the C word is, my life is over. I want you to hear something, that's wrong. When you're a child of God, that's wrong. The first enemy, therefore, that you must conquer on the road to defeating cancer is fear. When your doctor gives you that routine examination and says you have cancer, the first emotion you're going to have is fear like you've never had in all of your life. You're going to be flooded with it in your mind and in your whole being because most people see the word cancer as a synonym for death, and I assure you that's wrong. Jesus looked at them and said, with men this is impossible, but with God 
nothing is impossible. Faith in God and a good doctor can work miracles. And don't turn off the TV, charismatics. I assure you, there's nothing wrong with having a good doctor. Fear is your first and greatest enemy that you're going to have to conquer. There are a great many medical uh, doctors in my family. And uh, I have heard them say over and over, a person's mental attitude in his sickness is greater than the medicine they put in your body. And I believe that. I believe that. Fear dwells on defeat. Fear dwells on defeat. Fear does not dwell on steps to recovery. Fear instantly spreads despair throughout your whole body. Fear spreads hopelessness. Fear spreads depression in your mind and your body. I want you to listen to this very carefully. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the conquest of fear. David said, I will fear no evil. He didn't say, I will face no evil. There's a difference. He had no fear of evil because Jesus was with him. We all must face fear and defeat fear. So courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the conquest of fear. When you feel fear, don't say, well, I must have weak faith. No, you're normal. Psalms 41, 1, 46, 1 and 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Then he says, though the earth give way. That's an earthquake. And the mountains fall into the sea. Now think about that. When the mountains start falling into the sea and the ground beneath your feet starts to split and swallow your house, it's a time to be concerned. David said, I'm not going to fear. If the earth opens up and mountains disappear, I will not fear. Paul said to Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-determination of a sound mind. Jesus gave this command to the church. Fear not. Say that with me. Fear not. Say it again. Fear not. Fear not your disease, because I am still the great physician. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he has done, he can do. He has not stopped healing. I assure you, there is nothing in the Word of God to suggest that the healing power of Jesus Christ was dispensational, meaning that it must stop when Jesus left the earth. He said to his disciples, greater things than these shall you do. And I assure you, you have the power to pray for someone and expect them to be healed. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick, say it with me, and they shall recover. Jesus said, what you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Not sometimes, I will do it. With men, things are impossible. But with Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible. Give him praise and glory in his house. <laughs> fear not your disease, don't fear tomorrow. Don't be concerned about tomorrow. Matthew 6, 34 says, do not worry about tomorrow. Say that with me. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has sufficient evil unto itself. The point is don't borrow trouble. Let me tell you how to have a nervous breakdown if you're perfectly healthy right now. Take all the problems of the past, collect them like lint, and all the problems of today and multiply them by the problems you'll think you have tomorrow, and in just a short while you'll be in a rubber room on the funny farm. Just live one day at a time. Don't borrow trouble. One man said, most of the trouble I've had in my life never happened. And the reason for that, you anticipate trouble when trouble doesn't come. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And because I know it's to be God, I know everything is going to be all right. Nothing is going to catch God by surprise tomorrow. It may catch me by surprise, but it won't catch God by surprise. And as soon as I touch in, touch in with heaven, everything is going to be all right. Your mental state of mind is critical to your conquering cancer or any other disease. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Say this with me. As a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're whipped, you are. If you think you can, you will. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 
Tough times don't last, but tough people do. I'm telling you, get your face in the Word of God. Get mentally tough and fight like a tiger. Your life is on the line. I've seen doctors walk into a hospital room and tell the patient, you have cancer. And I have seen this over and over in 40 years of ministry. And that patient turns pale instantly. Just the color drains out of them. And they start weeping. And they start writing out their last will and testament. And everyone who comes through the door, they start telling them goodbye. That's exactly the wrong thing to do. I want to say again, stop it. It's not over until God says it's over. Give God the chance, conquering your fear. Remember, fear not is a command. Studies at the Menninger Clinic state that every change in the mental and emotional state, whether conscious or unconscious, listen to this, is accompanied by a change in the body. That's where medical science gets the word psychosomatic. Psycho has to do with your mind. Somatic has to do with your body. That means body-mind relationships. That means what you think affects your physical body. Human beings are three elements in the Word of God. They are body, soul, and spirit bound together. Say that with me. Body, soul, and spirit. What affects your body affects your spirit, and that affects your, and that affects your soul. Dr. Herbert Benson states that in 25% of illnesses, Medicine is the crucial factor for recovery. Listen to this. In 75% of illnesses, our personal beliefs play the major role in healing physical ills. A medical doctor said this who has no claim to Christianity. He says 25% of illnesses are cured by medicine. 75% are, are healed by what that person believes. You can kill your fear with faith. I'm going to say that again. You can kill your fear with faith. When fear knocks at the door, send faith to answer, and no one will be there when they get there. Faith without works is dead. Fear is not an emotion. Fear Faith is not an emotion. Faith is a confidence in what God can do based on what God has done in the Word of God. That's why Hebrews 11 says, faith is the evidence. Faith is substantive. It's not an elusive, illusionary something. It's something that you can put your hands on and say there is substance to it. Faith starts out before you know how it's going to turn out. Faith is the daring of the soul that sees further than your eyes can see, that dares to dream the impossible vision. Back to the text of Jesus. With men, this is impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. People often say, Pastor Hagee, I'm not a person of great faith. Well, let me tell you, most of us are not. But I want to attack that phrase, great faith. It doesn't take great faith to believe in a God who never fails. It takes great faith to believe in something that only works once in a while. And when the Bible says Jesus never fails and God never fails, it doesn't take great faith to believe in a great God. God does not fail, and he will not fail you. There are four steps to conquering fear with faith. First, tell yourself the truth. This is where I get off the boat with a lot of charismatics. <clears throat> They say, don't admit what you have. To me, that's deception. Shine the light of knowledge into the darkness of fear. Don't be afraid to say, the doctor has diagnosed me with cancer because that's a fact. It is the truth, and any other statement is living in deception and denial. Secondly, saturate your mind in the Word of God. Proverbs 3 and 1 says, my son, forget not my word. Say that with me. My son, forget not my word. For a length of days and long life it will bring you. What does that? The Word of God. For the Word of God shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Navel is the point of contact between the mother and child in the womb. That means it's the source of life. Now take that back to Proverbs 3.1. The Word is health, is the navel. That means the Word of God is the very source of life, physical life to you. Morrow is where the red blood cells are repaired. It's the source of health and healing. The Word of God, therefore, is the source of restoration for your physical body. The greatest health manual you can get a hold of is right here. In our ministry, 
the John Hagen Ministries, we have the healing scriptures. Those of you in this room know that. Those of you who are watching by television don't know that. They're all on tape and they're set to music. Every verse in the Bible concerning the healing power of God so that you can saturate your mind, saturate your car, your house with the very presence of the living word of God and cause the healing power of God to be released into your home and into your body as you feel the presence of God. I believe the presence of God has much to do with how much the word of God is in you. The Bible says if you ask anything according to my will, according to the power that's within you, then you shall have what you ask. Thirdly, pray without ceasing. Tell God exactly how you feel. If you're angry, tell God that. If you're frustrated, tell God that. If you're depressed, tell God that. If you're fearful, tell God that. Don't be pious when you pray. Don't play games with God. God knows exactly what's going on in your life. Be honest. And fourthly, list all of your worst fears on paper. And that's a very scriptural thing to do. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. Say that with me. Write the vision and make it plain. When you write down your every fear, your every concern on paper, then in big words, bold letters, right over the top of that, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And know that God's not going to let you down. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. Fear not, fear not, fear not, because God is with you. Then, get proactive. <laughs> then get proactive about what you're going to do. I believe in getting a great doctor. It's not lacking in faith to have a doctor. Jesus had Luke the physician. All medical science and all knowledge comes from God. And all knowledge should be used to your benefit. There are doctors and there are better doctors and there are great doctors. And let me tell you something, if you go to a doctor and he's full of doom and gloom, get yourself another doctor. Don't stay with that sad sack. Let me tell you very candidly, and if you're a doctor in this room, I'd say it to your face. Some doctors quit studying when they get out of medical school. And they haven't looked at a periodical for 20 years, and they are medically in the dark ages. And in the last 20 years, medical science has gone a million miles. And if your doctor is still living in the Stone Age, dump him and get another one. You're in a fight for your life, and you need to act aggressively, and don't worry about his feelings. You need to find a doctor you can trust, and then trust the doctor you choose. Let me give you a testimony of, of a friend who is a, a partner in our television ministry. Her name is Georgia. She's a very successful uh, businesswoman. She lives in the state of Mississippi, and she owns a, a chain of hospitals, and uh, she has some knowledge about the medical profession and how it works, and she went to a doctor, and the doctor diagnosed her with a cancer and said, you've got three to six months to live, and it's over. And you need to take the money that you've got and go travel, have fun, live it up, because it's over. And she said, you're over. I'm finding myself somebody that knows something about what he's talking about. And she found herself a great doctor, and with God's faith in God and medical science, she is in perfect health, and that is almost 10 years ago. She is just as healthy as anyone in this auditorium because it's not over because the doctor says it's over. I have found this true about cancer victims. Those who conquer cancer reject being victims. They don't just roll over and resign themselves to the inevitable. Those who conquer cancer know that the power of the Word of God and the power of prayer and the power of faith can produce miracles, and they can do it. Those who conquer cancer challenge their situation. They take action, and I challenge you to take action. The most damaging, damnable thing you can do is sit down and do nothing. Because I assure you, it's not going to go away if you do nothing. Denying it will not make it go away. You must take action spiritually and naturally to conquer that thing. But you can do it with faith in Christ and good medical help. Conquering cancer 
you will have to defeat depression. After you face fear, you must conquer denial. You must conquer anger. And then you must conquer depression. You're going to ask yourself these questions, especially if you've been a Christian. Does God really care about me? Why has this happened to me? I have lived all of my life for the Lord. Why is this happening to me? Where is God? Where is God when I so desperately need him? Why is God so silent when I need to hear from him so desperately? Why do bad things happen to good people? It's natural to get depressed. I want you to look in the Word of God to people in the Bible who became depressed. Job said, why didn't I die the day I was born? You don't have to be Sigmund Freud to see depression in that. Elijah said, when he was hiding by the brook Cherith from Jezebel, take my life. I'm the only one left. God said, get off your pity pot, Elijah. I have 7,000 people in this neighborhood that love me just as much as you do. Jesus at Calvary said, my God, my God, not my Father. The only time in the scripture when Jesus didn't call God his Father, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was the most agonizing moment of his life. Remember, all people get depressed. The very best of the best and the very strongest go through times of depression. And when that happens, don't be difficult. Don't be hard on yourself in times of depression. It is a natural thing to go through. But I emphasize the word through. Get through it. Don't live there. And then embrace rest. Psalms 25, 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Sometimes when you don't rest your body, the Lord hits you between the ears with a hammer and maketh you to lie down in green pastures. And in David's, and in David's situation, the re reason that sheep were forced to lay down in the springtime in the grass and eat was it was imperative that they get fat because winter was coming and there was no Purina feed store on the corner where he could feed 100 pounds to every, to every animal over the winter. So they had to have fat that they accumulated in the spring to go through the winter. I'm telling you that there are seasons in your spiritual life. There are times when everything goes right. I mean, you go to the mall and there is a shopping place right in front of Foley's. How much better can things be? But there will come a winter time when everything goes wrong and all that you accumulated in the spring, you're going to exhaust in the winter. But on the other side of winter is springtime again. And God restores you and gives you an abundance and sufficiency to go through the journey. Sometimes God forces up to, to rest, totally rest. Forget what you need to do and rest. Rest builds your body. Rest builds your spirit. It builds your mind. Rest and sleep are gifts of God. They are not a waste of time. Rest, relax. You have been taught that you're only valuable if you're producing. That's wrong. The most productive thing you can do when you are not well is to rest. Rest. Enjoy a rich, full, happy life resting. And when you have energy, work. If it's for short periods of time, work. And when your energy is gone, stop. When your energy is gone, stop. Don't push it. When you run out of gas, pop. I can't say it any clearer than that. One day you'll feel like a racehorse. Well, just trot a little ways. But when you run out of gas, stop. Meditate on a favorite psalm when you get tired. Listen to gospel music. I like to listen to gospel music. Force yourself to think happy thoughts. And for some of you who have a sour disposition, that's a lot of mental control. Some of you doubt your doubts, and some of you doubt your optimism, but force yourself to think happy thoughts. David said it this way, delight yourself in the Lord, and I said that this morning. David, when he was going through great trial, he rehearsed every good thing that God had ever done for him, and it helped him go on to the next level. When he was getting ready to fight Goliath, he said to Saul, I've defeated the lion, I've defeated the bear, and now I know I can whip this guy. I think it's... You know, God helped him whip a lion and a bear before he faced people. And I think there's a, a, a sermon there, but that's another time. 
<laughs> delight yourself in the Lord. Rehearse your victories in the Lord. Rehearse the good things that God has done for you. Rehearse what God has, the prayers that God has answered and said, God, you didn't fail me then. I know you're not going to fail me now. I know you've done it in the past. I know you can do it again. You have answered my prayer before. I know you will not fail me now. And I have confidence that you're with me. Lastly, in the seventh thing, don't resist grief. Have you ever heard the expression, good grief? How many of you have ever heard that? Let me tell you something, that grief does have its therapeutic value. There will be times when you, are, when you are very sick, when grief literally gushes out of you. Let it. Let it. Don't try to stop it. It's healing, and it's therapeutic. The Bible says Jesus wept. If Jesus wept, you can. Paul wept. If he wept, you can. When your body has been traumatized by surgery or it has been traumatized by chemotherapy, your emotions are all over the page, and crying is a very normal healing process. There's nothing heroic about being stoic here. I want you to hear Isaiah 41 and 10. This is one of my favorite verses. So do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my right hand. And when you think about the hand of God, the Bible says that he holds the seven seas in the palms of his hand. And every time I go to the ocean, I think of that verse, that the God I serve has all of that water in the palm of his hand like one drop of water, and it's nothing. And when God has you in his right hand, you're in good hands. It's going to be all right. Have faith in God. With men, this is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. I want those of you that have cancer, I'd like you to come and line up over here. And I want to pray for you one at a time. And I'm going to believe God tonight that the healing power of heaven invade your body and touch you. I don't want you to have an ounce of fear in you. I want you to have total confidence and just line up right over here. And I want to pray for you one at a time. The doctor has diagnosed you as having cancer. And I'm believing God tonight to touch you in a very special way. Come right over here. Come right over here. Come here. I'll pray for you one at a time. What is your name? Mary, Marty. what kind of cancer do you have? Liver. You have liver cancer. Your name is Marnie? Marnie. Marnie, all right. Father, congregations, extend your hands toward her. This is your sister in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak against the cancer that's in her body. Every cell in her liver, right now, Prince of Glory, touch her and strengthen her. Let your power flow into her whole being and let the healing power of God touch her now. In Jesus' name, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For by his stripes we are healed. And I receive that healing virtue from the Lord Jesus Christ right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Melba. Melba. What kind of cancer do you have? You have lung cancer. Extend your hands toward Melba. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for Melba's healing right now. Lamb of God, Prince of Glory, touch every sack in her lung and let her begin to breathe with new life and new vigor. I curse every cancerous cell and ask you, Father, to touch her now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because nothing is impossible with God. Congregation, say that with me. Nothing is impossible with God. And I'm asking you, Father, to touch Melba now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What's your name? Vicki, what kind of cancer do you have? You have breast cancer. Come here. Father, extend your hands toward Vicki. I ask you now, in the mighty name of Jesus to touch this precious lady. You said without faith it is impossible to please God and her very presence here. 
is saying that she has faith in you. Now we lift our hands toward the only source that can help us, the living God. And I ask you, God, to invade her whole body and her whole being right now. In Jesus' name, heal her, Father. In Jesus' name, touch her. Let every cancerous cell die because of the victory we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Do you have the healing scriptures in your house? I want you to get them. I want you to listen to them. I want your mind to become pregnant with the word of God. So you know beyond any shadow of a doubt, God can heal you. He'll do it. Amen. Come here. All right. All right. What kind of cancer do you have? Bone marrow. Bone marrow cancer. All right. Let's extend your hands to our brother. Father, in Jesus' name, you see the cancer in his bones. Radiate it. By the power of God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, let every cancerous cell in his whole body die. Dry it up. Dry it up! Let him live because Jesus Christ is the giver of abundant life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What's your name? Jerry. What kind? Bladder. Bladder cancer. Jerry, are you a believer? Yes. You are. You believe Jesus can heal you? Yes, I do. Congregation, extend your hands to Jerry. Father, I'm asking you right now to touch Jerry. You see where every cancerous cell is in his body right now, and I'm asking you to take it from him. Father God, in Jesus' name, your word says, by your stripes we are healed. You said where two or three of us would come together, that you would be there. Great physician of Calvary, we receive you right now in this assembly of people and just radiate his body with Holy Ghost healing power. Father, let every cancerous cell dry up at its source and let the healing power of God invade his whole being right now and let him be healed. Because Jesus was a healer and is a healer, we receive it. And I know that Jesus Christ has the answer and he will provide for Jerry. Touch him, strengthen him, heal him now. Whenever fear knocks at the door of his soul, let him send faith to answer and let him live in confidence that God will not fail him. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come here now, amen. What's your name? Yolanda. Yolanda, what kind of cancer do you have? She found it in my bone marrow and I have Hodgkin's disease. Found cancer in her bone marrow and she has Hodgkin's disease. Do you believe Jesus can heal you? All right. Extend your hand to this beautiful lady. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you right now to touch this beautiful lady. Let the healing power of heaven just invade her whole body right now. I ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, that your power and that your grace can invade her whole being. By your stripes we are healed. That's it. Heaven's touching you right now. By your stripes we are healed. Glory to God in the highest. We receive your radiating power. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, let her whole being explode with the healing power of the Son of God. By his stripes we receive divine and supernatural healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sing with me, congregation. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. God bless you. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Cheryl Blaine, 
Most of you know her. She's an employee, Cornerstone, GETV. She's a very valuable employee, a very dear friend. And she has cancer. She's receiving chemotherapy for it. And I want you to extend your hands toward her and let's believe heaven just to totally heal her. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of the healing Jesus, and the Lord God who conquered every kind of known disease on this earth, I pray God right now that you'd touch Cheryl Blaine, supernaturally heal her, Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Let every cell in her body that's not in harmony with God's divine health supernaturally right now begin to obey the voice of the Creator. Speak life into her whole system. Let everything that's not in balance come perfectly balanced. Right now, Father, in the authority of your name, I receive your healing power because Jesus is the Lord, and I receive it for her. I receive it for her. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I receive it now. Let it happen. Let it happen. Radiating power of heaven, touch her whole being. Touch her whole being. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. stomach cancer. Extend your hands to Leslie right now. Father, look from your throne and touch Leslie. Father, in Jesus' name, let every cell in her stomach obey the commanding voice of Jesus Christ. By his stripes we are healed, and I speak to every cell in her whole being to obey the commanding authority of the Son of God. Father, heal her. Supernaturally radiate her body with the healing power of the Son of God and let her be healed because Jesus is the healer and I receive it for her now. Let your name be glorified because of what you do in her life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Come here. Okay. Who's the next one? Come here. What's your name? Oh, uh, Sean, where do you have cancer? You have ovarian cancer. I want every woman in this room, I want you to stand up and extend your hands toward your sister. And I want you to pray for her like this was you, because it could be you. And I want you to believe with me that God will touch her. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch my sister. Let the healing power of God radiate her ovaries and let her be receive the healing power of the Lord. Jesus Christ, Son of David, by whose stripes we will heal, touch her now. Father, let your healing power flow through her whole being and I receive it in the authority of the living God. Nothing shall be impossible to those that believe and I receive it because Christ has settled it at Calvary. It is a part of our heritage and I receive it in the authority of the name of God. In Jesus' name, come here. What is your name? Joanne. Joanne. What kind of cancer do you have? Ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Listen, raise your hands. Father, heal Joanne right now. Let this ovarian cancer die right now. Right now, healing power of heaven invade her whole being. 
Our natural eyes cannot see it, but with eyes of faith, I see every cancerous cell withering and dying right now because of the healing power of the resurrected Savior. Father, touch her, strengthen her, empower her, make her to know that you're with her, that God is beside her, that the holy angels of heaven are in front of her, that the Holy Spirit is in her. Nothing can conquer her because the word of God is in her mouth and she shall be healed because of faith in Jesus. In your name, I pray and ask it. Amen and amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, come here. Your name, sir. George. George, what kind of cancer do you have? Leukemia. Leukemia. You believe God can heal you, George? Yes, sir. Are you a believer, George? Raise your hands. All right, elders, put your hands on him. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for George right now. I'm asking you, God, to supernaturally let the power of heaven flow into his whole being. Let him right now receive divine infusion of health into his whole body. I'm asking you, Lord God Almighty, to touch and strengthen him because nothing is impossible to you. Medical science has said it's over, but God is saying, trust me, prove me. Let my mighty hand be extended toward you. We will not fear because God is our help and he is our refuge in the time of trouble. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I receive the healing. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Your name, sir. Al, and what kind of cancer do you have? Yeah, prostate cancer. Raise your hands, Al. I want every man in this building to get up and extend your hand toward Al. I want you to pray for him right now with me. Father, we extend our hands to Al in faith believing. God, I know that you have the ability to touch him. I know you have the power to heal him. And I'm asking every cancer cell in his whole being to come under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, because Jesus made it possible at Calvary for every one of us to experience his divine healing, I receive it right now in Jesus' name. By your stripes, we are being healed right now. And I'm speaking to every cell in this cancerous body. I'm commanding you in the authority of Jesus Christ. Die in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Come here. Yes, sir. Your name. Tom. Okay. Is bladder cancer? Does metastasize in his lung. Men, stand up and extend your hands toward Tom. Raise your hands, Tom. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you right now to supernaturally invade this body with radiating power that comes from the throne of God. Let every cancer cell in his body wither and die. Let every form of cancer in his lungs die. I'm asking you, God, for this metastasized cancer that it dies like a vine on the root that has been pulled out of the ground. Let it die and let the healing power of heaven be made manifest in his whole being. By his stripes we are healed now through the authority of Jesus Christ. I receive it, Father, and bless you because you can and are healing him now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you, Tom. Come here, please. Yes, sir. What's his name? Raise your hands. Father, I'm asking you to heal Lewis right now of cancer. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, let your power touch his whole being and heal him. Because the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And now in faith believing, we receive it in the majestic and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Come here. Your name. Yvette, what kind of cancer do you have? Okay. okay, the doctor's diagnosed you with cancer. Raise your hand. Ladies, stand up and extend your hand to this beautiful lady. Now, Father, we're praying as a spiritual family. And our sister has come saying, pray for me because I need your help. And the word of God says, God forbid you that I should sin in ceasing to pray for you. I'm praying for her right now, my father. 
anointing her with oil according to the holy word of God. And I'm asking that the holy power of heaven invade her whole being right now. From the crown of her hand to the soles of her feet, let her be supernaturally infused with power. Let every cancer sail with her and die. I curse it in the authority of the risen Lord. And know that because Jesus Christ is Lord, healing power shall come into her whole being. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. What's your name? Caroline, what kind of cancer do you have? You have ovarian cancer. Raise your hand. Ladies, extend your hands to her. Father, in Jesus' name, touch her now. Let this ovarian cancer die because Jesus Christ has made it possible. You are the Lord of glory. You are the God who is almighty. And behold, this is a small thing for you. Now, Father, I'm asking you that your radiating power invade her whole being and let her experience the supernatural healing power of the living Savior. Heal her supernaturally, dramatically, obviously, that your name might be glorified to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sing with me. There is power, power for kind of cancer do you have? Yeah. Okay, raise your hand. She has leukemia. Father, I'm asking you to touch Jewel right now. Now, healing power of God invade her body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. What is your name? Elvira. Elvira. What kind of cancer do you have? You have liver cancer. You believe Jesus can touch you? Raise your hand, sweetheart. Father, in the majestic name of Jesus, touch Elvira. In the name that's above every name, radiating power of heaven, touch her, strengthen her, heal her, because Jesus has made it possible at Calvary that every cancer cell dry, but that die because of his stripes we are healed and I receive it in the authority of the Son of God based upon the scripture of what Jesus has done. I receive it now for this precious child of God from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Heal her, blessed Redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, sir, what's your name? Well, I, I want to stand up for my niece. My niece has cancer all the body. name again? Nelda. Nelda. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for his niece that has cancer in Kerrville through her whole body. Now touch her now. Healing power of God. Radiate her whole being. Touch her supernaturally, powerfully, instantly. Grace of heaven invade her whole being and let her feel the very power of heaven where she's laying right now, charged through her like electricity, healing every fiber of her being, knowing that Jesus Christ is the Lord. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. Are you, are you here for cancer? Your grandfather. Let me take you, and then I'll talk to you. What's your grandfather's name? Fred. Fred. Levante los manos. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now to touch his grandfather. I ask you, Father, let your healing power invade his whole being in Jesus' name. I receive it because Jesus made it possible. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And because Jesus said it, I believe it and I practice it. And I know that what Jesus has said, he will do. In the name that's above every name, touch him. 
and strengthen him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You're in this room. You have any kind of sickness other than cancer, and you want the Lord to heal you. I want you to stand right where you are right now. You want to be healed from any kind of sickness or disease that you have. Stand right where you are right now. I want those of you who are around them, I want you to turn and I want you to put your hands on them and we're going to pray right now that God will heal you. The Bible says you have the authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Father, I'm asking you right now for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this assembly, touch them and heal them because Jesus Christ has made it possible. Let every form of sickness wither and die at the command of the majestic name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Lord, to walk the aisles of this assembly and right now let your healing, he healing power radiate every person in this room with divine infusion of healing force. Let every cell in our body come under the authority of God. From the, crown of our, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, let every malady and sickness known to man come under the authority of God. By your stripes we are healed, and I receive it now in Jesus' name. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to say this with me. I do not fear. For the Lord is with me. I will not be dismayed. For the Lord is my God. The Lord is my strength and my helper and my healer. He will uphold me with his right hand. I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. Give the Lord praise in his house. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name. 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 Down at the cross where my Savior died. Everything that happens in the house of the Lord should bring glory to his name. And those of you that were prayed for tonight, when the doctor tells you your cancer is gone, I want you to write it down so I can read it to the congregation to bring glory to the name of God who is our healer. It's good for you to say so, and it's good for God's children to know so. Give him praise. Amen. Amen.
Call us at 210-491-5100 or write to John Hagee Ministries, P.O. Box 1400, San Antonio, Texas, 78295. Canadian residents call 416-447-4000 or write Box 990, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z6A7.